I thought today we're going to concern ourselves a little bit with nutrition because it's Halloween. We have to be dressed up and my lovely partner thinks I look like Ronnie McDonald. <laughs> I thought it was a clown, but I, so I thought Ronnie McDonald the nutrition terrorist. Ta-da! Right there. So that's what I thought. So I want to just bring this chapter forward and then we'll just put, pick up where we left off on Monday. So Monday will be blood vessels and then wherever we go with that. Oh my God. Ooh, look at that, it goes up like that. So when we look at food, any kind of food, fundamentally speaking, we want to make energy. We want to make energy out of food, we want to make ATP because we do need to, um, well, what do we need ATP for? Everything. Thinking, running, breathing, even breathing takes ATP. So. Uh, we do that through combustion, and that's called cellular respiration. That's just a term that I have there. I'm not sure, you know, for the test ability stuff. I don't know how much on this chapter. I don't think much is on the test. But I want you to have some of these terminology down. Just at least you can look it up uh, if you do other classes. Of course, if you take a nutrition class, you're going way beyond me. Then, then you can help me out when I mix it up, please, if you want to take the class. Um, but that cellular respiration, when we make ATP with the food that we eat. Um, and then, of course, we use that energy to build and maintain the body. And, of course, I like the little graphics. Over there. So when we eat food, the food will be first, will be broken down by chemical digestion and mechanical digestion. So the term digestion refers to the fact that we break down food. Chemical digestion is you, uh, mechanical is you, you chew, you chew the food. That's mechanical digestion. You break down the food by chewing on it. It's really hard to eat a nice Big Mac if you can't chew it. Uh, also though in the mouth, we have saliva, we have spit. And that contains uh, particularly uh, enzyme called amylase. Remember AIC means it's an enzyme. Amylase digests carbohydrates, sugars. So if you eat a savory sandwich and you chew it long enough, it becomes a little bit sweet because the sugar in the bread will break down. That's when you know your amylase is working, you can swallow it. That's when they say chew it 150 times. Well, that's what it sounds like. Then further down here, what I said is muscular churning. That just means when you know you have your stomach that turns the turns the food around. That's also breaking it down mechanically. And when the food is pushed forward, it also breaks it down mechanically. And then after the nutrients are digested and they're small enough, then we can absorb them through the intestinal mucosa, which we'll talk about later, that's the stomach, that's the small intestine wall of the small intestine, the mucosa. And we go into the bloodstream for most things or to lip vessels for fats. So water soluble uh, nutrients go to the bloodstream into the liver first and fat solubles go through the lymphatic system into the blood system through the, near the heart. Make sense? Not too heavy so far, huh? Look at that now, cellular respiration. Once we get, so this is where the food particles go, they go to the, I talked about that, they go to the hepatic portal, so most of them go to the liver for processing. Well, the liver is where we all process the food first, and most of the food goes right there. That's called the hepatic portal vein. The vein that goes from the, from the gut, from the small intestine, to the liver. And that's initial processing before we get to the body cells. And so once, once the food goes from the, stu from the intestine to the liver, it's processed, then the blood carries it around in the body. And in the cells, they will be, food will be broken down. Ho hopefully oxidatively, that means we have oxygen present in the breakdown process. Oh, no, not this one. Oxygen, O2. Oxidative means oxygen. 
And that's happening in the mitochondria, and as a result out of that, we get ATP. <laughs> so we need food plus a lot of things and oxygen to make ATP. And as a byproduct from oxygen, then we get the CO2, and then that has to be brought back out through the lungs as we breathe out, brought back into the world. We're just talking in the blood about that process a little bit, at least the bicarbonate ions. And so ATP then is like a potential energy. That's like energy that's in a battery. Um, and so we, need, we, we can then split a phosphate from that adenosine triphosphate. Remember that, the triphosphate? So 3P, we go to a diphosphate, an ADP, and that gives us the energy for cellular work. Usually that's a muscle contraction, protein synthesis, or so whatever we need the body to do. So we have potential energy, Work energy. That's sort of the symbolism of that. I like some of these slides actually because they do sim they do actually just talk about what we talked about. Even if it's Homer Simpson, he doesn't have to say it; he just has to act it out. He probably can't say it, right? Then we have metabolism, and metabolism is anything that is biochemical processes. All the biochemical processes we need to maintain life. So all that stuff that's chemical stuff in the body is called metabolism. We use two terms if you think back um, to the chemistry. Catabolism is, when it, is the processes that break down energy rich into energy poor molecules with the liberation of ATP. So that's when we built, we break down stuff. Anabolism includes processes that make things, that synthesize things in the body. So when we eat food, we catabolize the food and then we anabolize when we synthesize endogenous things in the body. Endogenous means the body makes itself. So it makes substances. And we use ATP for that. And we also use ATP, of course, to maintain the body. Um, plants use photosynthesis. They use sunlight to make this energy that they need to live. We animals need food to get this energy from. So that's of course, why we eat, besides the fact that it's just a lot of fun to eat. So let's talk about this energy need. How, what is an energy need? It's the amount of energy we need for our body to maintain itself, to build, to do what it needs to do. And that depends on many things. It depends on age, it depends on sex, depends on weight, depends on what the temperature is. Right now it's really hot in here for me. You too. Yeah. Uh, and mental, mental also, so don't worry if you feel it's hot in the room where you study this class, it is using a lot of energy. Physical activity, of course, we know that when we run around. Also emotional reactions, a fever, or a lot of times what we miss when we can't lose the weight is thyroid. How is the thyroid doing? Thyroid hormone is the hormone that brings off uh, uh, metabolism, that, that brings this uh, chemical catabolism, metabolism goes up and down with that. So that is a very important gland to check out. The thyroxine levels can be checked in the blood. Um, but physical activity is definitely the great one, as we know already. When we look at measuring energy requirements, we first start with a basal metabolic, meta metabolism or metabolic rate. And that's where we're just not doing nothing. We're just laying around. And everything else is excess metabolism. So we'll get back to that in a minute, because first what we gotta do here is we need to talk about what a calorie is. So a calorie, because that's, when we look at these rates, we'll measure it that way. A calorie is the energy content of a nutrient that's measured by burning and capturing the heat using a combustion chamber, a calorimeter. Whenever you see the word meter at something at the end, me meter, you know it's something measuring something. Because it comes from the distance <laughs> meter. That's why it's the way they use it like that. It would be kind of hard to say calorie millimeter. But uh, they you know, basically burn it and measure what the heat thing is, and then that's one large calorie is expresses the energy it takes to heat one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. And Celsius is 
that measuring scale that we use everywhere except for here. That is when, when a zero Celsius is when ice goes to water and 100 degrees Celsius is when water goes to boiling. So that's where it's set up. So that's why in science they use Celsius, not Fahrenheit, because it's, it's much more random for us as Fahrenheit is concerned. So that's why they also use Celsius here. So you take one kilogram, you know, that's about this much water. This is half, this is half a kid, this is half a liter. A liter of water is one kilogram. Uh, if this is filled with water, that's half of that, and you heat that up by one degree Celsius, and you're gonna get, that's one large calorie. And when we look at the food stuff, one large calorie, one, ca one gram of carbohydrates and of protein contains about four kilocalories, and one gram of fat about 9.3. That's why fat got the bad rap, <coughs> because it's so energy dense. But no, you just don't eat it as much. But, and it's satisfying, so you do not eat as much than if it's just carbohydrates. And then alcohol is seven kilocalories per gram. So I just put this up to the, uh, today, I like it. It's all these strawberries you can eat is a 96 calories, you can eat two damn freaking Oreo cookies is a hundred calories. It's like, damn. And I really don't know, you know, and I think about this like, you know, I brought this McDonald's thing because I'm like looking at this going like, okay. And then I brought this broccoli thing. It's like, how many of these do I have to eat to get anything out of it? That's the other question, right? Sometimes you do want to have energy-dense food, like you're running on a tennis court and you're collapsing halfway. You need some sugar cubes. So when we look at the energy requirements, we go with this basic metabolic rate. What's the in resting condition? We don't do nothing while we watch TV. That's, for us, that's probably that. We need one kilocalories per kilogram of our body weight per hour. How many kilograms? I'm about 70 now, maybe five, I don't know. I pulled it along this summer. So that is a kilogram. It's about 155, so it's about half. So you do the, the pounds by half is about a kilogram. And then that per hour per, times the hour, so 70 kilograms times 24, that's 24 hours. That's what you use per day just by laying around. That's what your body uses more or less. So about 1,700 kilograms, ladies are a little bit lower. I don't know why, but. And then physical activity is the stuff that adds on to it. So when you do desk work, you're already adding on 1,000 to that thing. So you're still sitting on a desk, but you're chewing stuff on a desk. When you do moderate work, is like mowing the lawn. You add another 1,000, more or less. And when you do heavy work, you add another 1,000. You're moving furniture. So there is sort of your requirements because it's important. Because you could be you know, a big guy doing nothing or you can be a little guy doing anything. Yeah, that's an ant. Huh? Right there. It's really strong. It almost made it. That ant needs a lot of energy. Uh-oh. My nose is falling off. So that's the energy requirements. Whoa, look at that. We got to just look at that. Look at that. It's so good. Anyway, look at all these people. Look at all these people. Ha ha. Now they're all on this video. Uh oh, now I don't know if the video is doing it right anymore. Yeah, that's about right. So when we now look at the foods that we eat need to give us energy, so what kind of foods are we going to eat? Ha! Huh. Is it going to be McDonald's or is it going to be broccoli or is it, this is my smoothie, I really like the smoothie. Uh -huh. Frozen fruits from Trader Joe with some smoothie powder. Um, you know, it's probably a combination of everything a little bit, I hope. Yeah. I mean, that's really the goal. I mean, we can argue McDonald's never, but you know, the question you've got to ask yourself actually is, do you want to be an asshole and go to Whole Foods and eat the best food you can eat and be bitter as a Grinch? Or do you want to be happy as a lark and go to McDonald's? Which foods you absorb better in which state of your mind? So that's because, you know, soul food is very, very important. And whoever, whatever soul food is for you, that's fine. But not every day. That's the key ingredient. Do not need food, we do not need meat every day. 
Because look at protein, for example. You think, oh, we need meat for protein. Okay. Balanced diet should include all of it. Protein, fats, macronutrients, as well as my micronutrients. Oh, wait, that's a slide that's a little first. But, but anyway, I go, so we need macronutrients, that's proteins, carbs, and fats, and we need the small stuff. That's vitamins, minerals, and trace elements and stuff. We have no idea that's in plants, we just know it's good for us. Because science can't pick it all up, even though they think they're so great about it. And then, of course, we need water. I go with, you know, two quarts, or they also say half your body weight in ounces, half the body weight in pounds in ounces. Um, I think two quarts is a good baseline. And then fiber. Fiber is very, very important. We'll talk about fiber. And so when we look at protein, protein provides uh, our body with amino acids which we use then for biosynthesis, endogenous proteins, which are our workhorse molecules. Remember in the, in the chemistry? Proteins are the enzymes. They break things down. Proteins are in muscle. They move, the, they move us around. In tendons, they hold it together. They're construction material. That's all protein stuff. So we need a bunch of protein to make our own protein. So we eat the protein, break it down into amino acids, and then have that, you know, the DNA strand get copied, go outside of the cell into the ribosome and make that amino acid chain, and then that's our own protein, hemoglobin, whatever we want. Whatever we got stored up to make, it's really great. That's the cookbook of DNA. So here we have a list, look at all this stuff. We got 49% in spinach is protein, 45 in kale, 45 in uh, broccoli. Broccoli is actually really, really good, it's my favorite. So broccoli is good, but it's like hummus. Mm. You have broccoli and hummus? Have you had broccoli and hummus? Broccoli and hummus? Oh, I love it. Huh? Broccoli and eggs. Oh, I'm going to make that next time. So, we got, look at, we got a lot of, pro even in cucumber, which you think is just water. That's good. The cucumber, 24, even there is protein in there. And it's not all in the eggs or in the chicken or in the beef. It's not that much more percentage. That blew me away. I didn't know that. I know, right? That's what I thought. I'm, I'm sure that's wrong. But who knows? I, no, I know it's not. I'm sure it's not wrong. Um, one of the things we need to remember is we cannot make eight of the 20 necessary amino acids. <coughs> They're called essential amino acids. The problem between this and this is not the amount of protein, it's the combination of proteins. Because not, and not, none of the vegetarian sources has all the eight amino acids that are essential. But the meat sources do. And so you can just eat meat to be fine, but you have to know which vegetable combinations you eat if you're fully vegan to be fine. But you can do it because Mr. Super Gorilla, he's a vegan, apparently. But you have to know how, and I'm sure he's eating a lot of vegetables. So that's the interesting thing about the protein part, but I didn't really know at first. And then we got fats, and fats primarily provide us with energy, uh, storage and energy, and then ex aerobic exercise burns it. But when we say aerobic exercise, aerobic refers to breathing, that refers to oxygen. So that means we have oxygen in the system, and as we remember, in the mitochondria, I think we have a slide on the mitochondria, in the mitochondria we make a lot more ATP and energy when we have oxygen presence compared to when we do not have oxygen presence. And then we also have functional lipids, and most of them are cholesterol based, and they are in sex glands, the sex organs, the sex hormones for example, adrenal glands has all of those in there, it's all uh, cholesterol based, uh, uh, and those are functional li lipids. Fats are solids that allow um, complete absorption of fat soluble vitamins. We also need to keep that in mind. So, if we eat a salad with a lot of great vitamins on it, but we do not put any oily dressing at all on it, we might miss out on those vitamins. We don't need all that ton of oil. <laughs> a little bit. You know, you have like, but you know, you've got a, a vinegar thing and an oil thing. You go a little bit of this, a little bit of this, and that's it. 
It's like, I know, we buy the dressing, the thing is like huge like that, right? So you open it up, it's not even that. And he goes, oh, never mind. <laughs> then you take it up, I know, no, not that one. A little bit, but that we keep that in mind. And, and olive oil is a good fat. Now, unfortunately, these days, the avocado is getting into the bad rap. Have you heard about that? Yeah, oh, I didn't hear that. Have you heard about that? Yeah. It's like, not that, that, you know, not that drug money is the avocado money. And, and it uses a lot, but I, I'm not quite, and now I'm just eating guacamole, right? It's not, <laughs> I don't eat avocado, it's just guacamole. Well, no, I don't think the avocado is a problem from a health perspective. I think it's a problem because of the water and the political. Also the health? Yeah. Ooh, where did you hear that? I'm, I'm not, I did listen. I avoid the news these days. <laughs> Well, yeah, but what does overdo mean? Well, this one, it was a health guru, um, Dr. Oz. Oh, okay. And he was eating avocado on his bread every day. Well, yeah, he don't eat the overdo. And right. he ended up having a heart attack. Oh, my. Well, so. well if, if, it brings me to this piece here. It brings me to this puppy here. <laughs> It bring, listen up, listen up. It brings me to this puppy here. When we look at fats, we look at good fats and we look at bad fats. And so when we look at the good fats, we look at shh, we look at monounsaturated fats, and those are liquid at room temperature and naturally occurring many foods. So you look at if they're liquid at room temperature, it's already a plus up. And then you look at also polyunsaturated fats. So monounsaturated are these omega nines. We never really talk about the omega nines. Those are just around all the time. Those are like your olive oil and stuff like that. And then the polyunsaturated some fat are liquids that are also liquid at room temperature, and they occur also naturally in many foods. Those are the I don't know why they say the same thing. I didn't read this thing properly. Huh? They they are like the fish, the salmon, the walnut, that kind of stuff, or nuts also. And those are very necessary for many functions because they are essential. And essential means we don't make it. And the omega apparently means you go, you know, with the yeast, the like, the, the, the triglyceride strand things, yeah. the glycerol, and then the things coming off, and these wiggly things. And the omega counts the third bond from backwards. And that's a, a double bond. And that's why they call it omega-3. So that's sort of why, apparently. But for us, what's important is we find those in the freshwater fish, a cold, no, cold water fish, and in nuts, uh, very nicely. Then the bad fats are the saturated fats. Those are really bad uh, because, well, this, those are bad. They're not the worst ones. Those are meats. Those are butter. Those are avocado. Those are those things. You want those in moderation. You don't want, like, you know, your salad is not supposed to be on a little leaf. It's sort of a little bit the other way around. And then, but then we get the trans fats. And the trans fats are the ones you just avoid. Oh, yeah, look, probably in here. See? This is the large one. But they're so good. I know, they're so good. But you know the story about some of the story I listened on a podcast on, my, on, on um, Gladwell, uh, Revolutionist History or something it's called. And it talks about how one guy changed the fat this is made in from a lard sort of base thing into a vegetable based thing in the 80s or so. And they said they never changed that formula, but they did. And from that point on, that is vegetable oil that's cooked and not lard anymore. So you go into this arena much more, into the inflammatory arena much more. So trans fats, become more inflammatory. Also, vegetable fats compared to saturated fats are much more inflammatory. Now, the vegetable fats may increase your, I mean, the saturated fats, the, the, the fats from the meats may increase your cholesterol, but they don't increase your um, inflammatory response as much as the fats that are marginated, like the trans fats sort of stuff. And so that's a very interesting, actually, thing that I just learned a couple of years ago. It was very interesting. Those, those fries are fresh. 
<laughs> yeah, you want some? No, no, fine. No, they are. No, 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 it's okay. Well, I don't know if I need them. I don't like them. Well, you got a French fry cover. You got a French fry. Um, go oh, you want some? <laughs> oh, yeah. <okay. laughs> then we go to carbohydrates. Now, when we go to carbohydrates, that is a preferred source of energy for many organisms because we can store carbohydrates in small quantities as glycogen by the liver and skeletal muscle and a little bit in the brain apparently also and so I have a little bit of this glucose in the bloodstream goes with the insulin into the cells and then we can store it in the liver as glycogen in the muscle a little bit as glycogen love carbs love carbs right well sugars are really good they preserve our foods from deteriorating so that's perfect and of course, the other thing is Toblerone. It's the sweet, right? It's all the nice, good candy stuff. So the sweet makes it taste very, very nice and very popular because of that. Now, the Toblerone story is very, very funny because when I was in Switzerland, and I, with my, uh, uh, we went there with my first time before we were married. We were massage therapists. And we traveled to some friends of the family, and they wanted a massage. They had some friends coming in, and they wanted a massage. And all, I mean, we, I knew those people, but I didn't know really those people. Their name was Tobler. My first, she said, oh, like Toblerone. I was like, no, no, there's many Toblers. Don't, there's not like, don't say, hello, Mr. Toblerone. And uh, it turned out it was Mr. Toblerone. <laughs> it was the son of Mr. Toblerone, apparently. And so that taught me a lesson. Do not, you know, just go with the flow. Um, the problem with sugar is the sugar spike. So simple sugar burden the pancreas heavily as it needs to secrete large quantities of insulin quickly. So when we get, <laughs> where are we? Well, we get blood sugar goes up, insulin goes into the, goes into the system, brings the sugar stuff into the uh, cells, into the liver cells, and the blood sugar declines. We don't just use the, 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 the um, Oh, the body cells take the glucose up. Yeah, that's what they do everywhere. The liver makes glycogen for storage. That's also muscle and a little bit in the brain. So when we need to have some energy ready, we do have some ready. That's great. That is great. That is great. And so then the blood glucose level goes down. So if we eat sugar like donuts and coffee, or you know this sort of unfortunately, uh, because it is definitely really yummy, the sugar in the blood goes really high. The pancreas needs to go, whoa! Pump, 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 pump! So we go really low afterwards. And then we crave again some other stuff. And we go, woo, woo, woo! And some of the blues here, the sugar blues, is in the afternoon at 2 o'clock. Some of that is that. Other things about that afternoon time has to apparently to do that we might be bad biphasic sleepers. You know? We might be not DNA programmed to only sleep one time a day. That's new food for thought, right? Um, uh, I forgot how the process of all the artificial sugars, how they become addicted. Artificial sugar addicted? No. That's just regular sugar addicted. Uh, because pe regular sugar is very addictive. I was standing in line and it was a great America and I had these young people, they were in front of us, they were talking, and I was playing with Grand Baby. And they were talking about that sugar apparently is more addictive than heroin that they read something. I was like, yeah, really? Made pro I, I don't know, I didn't read up on it, but it makes sense. And so, when we got the sugar go up and down, we, and we use this a lot, we gotta get exhausted. The pancreas gets exhausted, and the variability in manual physical performance goes greatly up and down, because we have sugar spikes that go up and down all the time. And so that's not so great. So don't wait till you get to that place figure out a little bit sooner, figure out a little bit sooner what it means to be up here, because you know the shaky. I mean, I, I was a kid. You don't know the shaky? Just eat some of these candies, it's gonna happen. All the like sugar shake, no? Sugar rush? Well, yeah, that's sugar, that's what I mean. No, yeah, me no sugar rush? Well, then we gotta definitely change something. <laughs> Where are you? I took a seminar on dementia, and they call that Alzheimer's, they call that diabetes type 3. 
And a big talk about it was this stuff. And they said, those are acupuncture people, so I don't know if you can trust those, but hopefully. But no, I know, I'm sure you can. By mid-30s, we used up all our sugar capacity that we should have. I'm like, really? So we stay for the rest of the seminar. Um, but when we look at sugars, we need to look at simple sugars and whole grain type of sugars. We need to look at, you know, how much is all this stuff? This is, look at this, is 500? This is maybe a small one. That is maybe bigger. Then I got, this is probably about 1,000 or something. And so that's a lot of stuff. And then the biggest problem is really this stuff. The soda. Because every calorie that you drink, you also have to eat. Because your system doesn't recognize it as food. So it's just sugar water. Are you pouring all the pounds is the question with that. But it's not just the Coke. It's not just that. It's the lot and all that stuff. So I have this here. Look at that. Juice, 100, 400 for the mocha, whatever. For a regular cola, 220 ounces. That's a big cola. 20 ounces, that's pretty big. 300 almost. It goes on and on. The beer's not any better. And then you got to look at the serving size. Well, then the serving size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So we want to stay as much in the whole grainy department as we can stay in the whole grainy department. And we want to look at, down here, we want to look at more the dietary fiber stuff, not so much just the sugary stuff. So when you look at carbohydrates, you look at the fiber, not just the sugar. Because you want to have a lot of fiber. Fiber really helps with everything. We'll talk about fiber in a minute, why it helps. Because that brings me actually already, we talked a bit about the fats, not that much, a little bit protein, and now we get, and the carbohydrates, and now we already get to the micro stuff, the micronutrients. So vitamins is the big one in there. We all know about vitamins. Vitamins life. We need those because the body cannot make those. So it's not a choice, we need them. We must ingest uh, food regularly with them and or, or and or, I would go with and or, not just or, take supplements. But when you take a supplement, I should have brought my supplement box. Hmm. I, I like to take food concentrates, not synthetic vitamins. There's a good story about, about the Korean War inmate something and they had some problem with a vitamin B. I forgot what it was, but it was in rice bran. And and they shipped it to them in a synthetic form from America, but then the locals gave them rice bran. And the American version, the synthetic version, did not do nothing. The other ones did, because it was a whole food. It wasn't just an extract of some. I mean, some of these things, when you read, this is a label for centrum silver ingredients. And it's a little small, but I just didn't have that much time. But I looked at a, a bunch of these things. I mean, you got a whole bunch of weird stuff in here. That's a vitamin. That's a vitamin. And so, you know, when you look at and, and when you look at a vitamin, what you do is you take a vitamin, you leave it out overnight. If it stays sharp like this, you don't necessarily you want to think about it. If it blows up and gets deteriorated, that's probably a good vitamin. Because because you want it to deteriorate. You don't want it to you don't want to poop it out the way you take it in. So that's you know, so when I look at a vitamin. I look at the supplement fact and I go like, what is in the back? What's the kamu kamu berry? I just took one that I, you know, I want to eat Brussels sprouts. The smoothie, I, I use standard process. I love my standard process. Wait, what's that thing? That thing is a, is a vitamin that looked like this, but was laid out, left outside and I... Uh, so you oh, want it to... You want it to deteriorate outside. Because you want the system to digest it. But I have a question. Yes, my dear, take the microphone. I forgot about that, huh? <laughs> What's the difference in a liquid vitamin and... Well, it's absorption question, but I'm not so sure about that question. I mean, I, I think I'd rather have... You know, I think it goes back to what's in the vitamin. It goes back to what's in the vitamin. It doesn't work. I don't think it works. Just put it away. I need to get better. But that's why I would look at what's in the vitamin. I think some people tolerate vitamins better than others. I have to be very careful. My stomach is very sensitive. I thought all vitamins were good. Like, I didn't see 
No. Wow. What? No. So like in here, I have to think, it's like broccoli sprouts in here. Kale stuff, because I don't like to eat kale all the time. Yeah, I don't like to eat Yeah, so you eat it, you, you know, eat it in a powder format. Where do you get your vitamins? Well, I get it through my, my supply standard processing, but you can go online or go to Whole Foods. There's good, there's good. It's out, right? Yeah, yeah. There's good vitamins around there. I'll get them. There's, there's good vitamins out there, but that's why I want you to look at the labels. That's what's important. You want to know what's in the light. You've got to kind of understand what it is or look it up and know what it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what do you mean by just leaving it overnight? Just like take one out of the bottle and then just... Yeah, you don't have to do that test. But that's what they did is these. There's more on it. I just had no space. But they left the whole bunch out and see how, do, how are they overnight or maybe two nights afterwards. And they see which one deteriorates faster. And actually, these you want them to deteriorate faster. It's like you're leaving this out in a cabinet, and you're leaving a fresh burger from down the street burger place out in a, in a cabinet. You can still eat this probably after two weeks. Because the person, one patient came in, they all do these tests. One patient came in yesterday, she did the test, and she said two weeks later that the bun had a little thumb, something on it, but to me it was fine. Yeah. A little dry, you pull water on it, you microwave. This is, we call that. I've heard that. We call that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We might be a time we more lucky if you have food like that. So we, could, we consume all the ones that right? Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's what I like. You know, I, li I don't do that, but it's a good test to see, you know. Um, once you take that thing out that they have, that wide little bag. Um, so when we look at the vitamins, we have water-soluble vitamins, and we have fat-soluble vitamins. The water-soluble vitamins are like your vitamin Bs and your C vitamins. And they are not stored. You will excrete them in a urine within an hour, if not used, or hours, I guess. No, it's that within an hour involved. So I use that. So you want to keep eating fruits and stuff and stuff like that throughout the day a little bit because you're going to pee them right back out. So those are not the ones you take once a day, unless they don't digest. Then it don't matter. That's maybe why they call once a day. I'm not sure. And then we have fat-soluble vitamins, and those are stored in the liver and in fatty tissues. They need to be absorbed together with other fats, and those are traditionally your A, D, E, and K. And then the requirements of vitamins depend on um, many factors. Uh, 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 one is your age, sex, physical activity again, uh, physical condition, pregnancy, for example, stuff like that. Yes, sir? So uh, all these natural vitamins and stuff that we consume have natural sugars in of natural sugars? Yeah. Yeah, but that's my new. Uh, would that affect your like the color of your urine? The color of what? Your urine, like your pee. Your pee. Well, the B vitamins can do that. Okay. Absolutely, the B vitamins can do that. And here I made a little list of, of vitamins of the functions of what they do. The A, you know, just the general. The A is healthy T skin. We have Bs are for body energy, protein digestion, central nervous system, and so, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. I just put them up so you can look through them. And the sources, I like that actually. I like this chart actually. It's kind of common sensey. It doesn't, uh, you know, like it doesn't, it doesn't have too many difficult languages that we just don't get it anymore. All that biochemistry stuff, you know. I also have another chart that I was actually going to copy that looked pretty, pretty complete. I might make some copies if I'm not forgetting about it. Then now, uh, what happens also is when we only eat this sort of stuff. We're going to have a problem later on because we're going to deplete the body out of it. So if we, we can be malnourished, but you plenty your calories. Because we need to eat the essential stuff. If we don't eat the essential stuff, at some point the body's going to just take, you know, you, can, you have a hard time fending off stuff, other things, pathologies. And so we need to be very careful about that for, for that reason too. So we don't need to just eat only good stuff, but we also need to balance it out, at least. Um, we can have, for example, vitamin C deficiency is scurvy. So we get sunken eyes, we get pale skin, we get loss of teeth, all the connective tissue starts falling apart. <clears throat> uh, or vitamin D deficiency is an inability of use, uh, it's called rickets, which just weaken the, the, the bones that sort of bend easily, for example, that's what that does. 
So we wanna, so there's some of these extremes when we don't do it, what we should sort of have as a baseline. And that is when your mom said, eat the vegetables. But you know, I, there's a TED talk, I need to find it. That, talk, that talks about if you, you really can influence your kids by making like the vegetables yummy. And the Cheerios, I don't like them too much, but I love the vegetables. Seems to work. But you know, I was you don't at UC Berkeley, so never mind. <laughs> not that there, but maybe there is a little bit of bias. I'm not sure on both sides, mine and theirs. Question back there? No. No, okay. Then that brings me to minerals. Minerals are part of the bone, calcium, lots of stuff from uh, calcium. Uh, the T's are also calcium, responsible for conducting electrical impulses. We'll be talking about that coming up. That's also minerals. Um, and they help in an osmotic pressure and environments, etc., like that. We talked about the osmosis about the blood. And the blood gets pumped out by into the tissues. How does it come back? Because of that protein in the blood. We talked about the protein in the blood, the albumin. Um, depending on their concentration in, in a food, we have to ingest macro minerals. Oh, uh, the macro minerals are minerals that we have. Calcium is the biggest one. Above 50 milligrams per kilograms of body weight. So we have macro minerals and micro minerals. And the micro mineral or trace minerals, sorry, those are less than the 50. So calcium is the most above because it's in all the bones. It's about 1.5 kilograms of our body weight. And most is in the bone. Some is in the, in the blood and the body fluids. <clears throat> and it's so crucial, and this is actually a great, a great example, the bones really a good reservoir for all the calcium. So we can always pull calcium out of the bone. So we do not need to eat calcium properly for a long, long time. At some point, we're going to have a problem with it, but we can definitely live a long, good life with that, through some of that. Um, then we have the trace minerals, and those are only about 8 to 9 grams. We have to uh, ingest about 100 milligrams a day of those. So that's very small stuff. That's a lot of the other ones. Uh, iron is an oxygen binding element, so that's about four to five grams of the body weight. So every hemoglobin has an iron in it. We have four and a half to five and a half million red blood cells with, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands hemoglobin in that, per cubic milliliter of blood. And we only need four and a half to five grams of iron in the body. That's pretty impressive to me of like how little an atom really is, just as a number, because I can never really visualize that stuff. Uh, iodine is part of the thyroid hormone, so that's also important. So that's one that we started supplementing in people, like in the vitamin D, we go into the milk. With the iodine, we go into the salt, and we got rid of the goiters, which are large and large thyroid glands because the thyroxin doesn't have the iodine on it, so the hormone is non-functioning. It's a good example why we need these things. And then the thyroid gland keeps producing more of that non-functioning hormone and the body thinks, where is the hormone? I can't find a hormone. And it makes more and more, but it's non-functioning. And so it's this loop that gets out of cycle and that's why the gland grows and that's why you get a goiter. And so when we put iodine in the salt, iodine salt, that problem was solved. That's one of those great feats of public health. And of course, there's a great place for attacks. But that's, you know, those are the things that we can really be grateful to medicine and to um, everybody else to figure these things out for us. It's like penicillin and all that. There is a list of the, vitamin, uh, of the minerals of what they do. I just put it there so we can look it up and read it up as we go through life and figure out what should we eat and why is this important and I don't care about it. Well, you know, until you're about 40, you got like a... <laughs> Leeway period, you know, you can get away with shit. And I mean, or, or you can look at it like you, you can learn how to act right until about 40, and then after that, it's good because for most of us, and, and we talked about that before, don't worry, the mental gets easier and the body gets a little harder. But if you do a few things right early on, it's fine. And one of the main things is that physical activity. And another one of that main thing is a little bit of all that antioxidant stuff and the vitamins and the minerals. It doesn't have to be like, you know, in a monastery type way of, of any kind. Uh, 
when we look at any oxidant, we have to look at the oxidative process. And free radicals are doing that. What they possess, they possess an unpaired electron, and they want, they are unstable, and they are reactive, and so they take an electron from another molecule. So that's the oxidating process. And they make them then into free radicals. So they bounce around in the cell and take electrons from other cells. And what we need is we need antioxidants, antioxidating things that eat up these free radicals. So they neutralize them because the problem is they go into the nucleus and they can damage your DNA. And we don't want to damage DNA because that means we age faster. And that's sort of that problem. So we have A, C, and E vitamins. The ACE in your hand is, free, is antioxidant vitamins. And we also have to trace mineral elements of selenium, manganese, zinc, and molybdenum. And then, of course, we have a lot of active plant ingredients that have great scavenger um, qualities. Scavenger qualities are like scooping up free radicals. Because they damage DNA because and that mutations are uncontrolled cell divisions and then they also damage the cell membranes because they oxidize the phospholipids. Uh, blah, 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 blah. There you go. Oxygen is a free radical in the basic configuration. It needs, we need it to get energy, ATP. It is unstable. We want it to be that way because when we look at, this is actually a mitochondria. This is called the electron transport chain. So this is all complicated stuff if you actually read all the little details. But this is what ultimately the glucose goes through the process of this. One glucose, a few parts of that glucose go through this process. And the important part of this process is right here where we have, where is, where we have hydrogen and oxygen is used to then power, and that's so shown here, to power that hydrogen through it to put the, a, the, the phosphate to the ADP and make an ATP out of it. And that process makes, makes water, but oxygen is oxidized, and oxygen is very radical, and it makes free radicals. So the more ATP we make, the more natural free radicals we make. So physical exertion makes more free radicals. So if you're a sporty person, you've got to eat some more vitamins. OK? Good. Acute inflammation is also causing all this stuff. So that's why they talk about the inflammatory process being such a problem. Uh, UV rays, other rays, certain products lead to increase of free radicals also. Uh, look at all the stuff, all that stuff. And that, that creates this oxidative stress, and then that creates to have the cells prematurely get old. And we want to sort of work against that. This is not really talking about you know, mortality. This is ultimately talking about morbidity. It's like how you're feeling going through life, not how old you're going to get. But if you feel shitty half your life, that's a bit of a problem. We want to work against that. <laughs> Well, if it's because you drank too much, that's fine for one or two days. But after a while, yeah, after a while. Um, then we also have to understand a lot of substances are in plants. And we might not have an understanding, but plants have many substances that protect them from sunlight, pests, and other adverse envir uh, environmental influences. And some substances also protect us, the people. So it's actually as simple as that, even though we don't necessarily know all the ingredients. Because many of them we have not figured out. So they're not available synthetically, and we need to ingest them in food, or we need to be in an environment of a forest or so once in a while. Go outdoors. That's right. Exactly. You cannot get it from the phone. I've not seen an active plant substance diffuser on a phone as an app. Can't get it. But there is many studies that indicate people that go outside because these plant things need to help themselves too, they have better immune systems and so forth because they're allowed that more and not artificial stuff. So that's kind of uh, cool. Scientifically very interesting are compounds that act as antioxidants and play a role in cancer prevention. Yes, absolutely. But they find out now when we talk about cancer prevention, making a fertile soil 
or an unfertile soil for the cancer, but a fertile soil for our whole body, our own body stuff, is how you really help prevent the cancer. It's not just the fighting. So a lot of times the, the fighting the cancer has been really what they're focusing on. But now I've had some nice TED Talks. They, they, the higher scientists, the ones who do the real science stuff, they talk about the food things and the fertile soil. And guess what? It's all the same foods. It's all the good rainbow stuff. Look at that. That's an example. Tomatoes, for example, has over 10,000 different things in it. But we only know a few of them. We know vitamin C. We know things they can do. Help blood pressure, for example. Oh, it has some aphrodisiac. I didn't know about that. Aphrodisiac. Mm -hmm. I got to think about that. Um, and it can also be used as food and skin care. I haven't used about like that either. But what the point basically is, we often don't know how foods behave in isolation. Fruits and vegetables, we often don't know how many things they have that are good for us and how things that we take out, like a vitamin C. How does it behave just taking out a vitamin C? Or how... How is it when it's together with all the other things? Because that brings you back to alchemy. Alchemy doesn't have to do with making gold, like some people think that. Uh, alchemy is the old chemistry, and that means one of the things in medicine, the way they made medicine preparates, is they did not destroy the food. They did not take one little thing out. They did not take aspirin, salicylic acid, out of the willow bark. They used the whole willow bark. Maybe they burn the wheel block, they cleanse the wheel block, they do, but they all use the whole thing again at the same, at together. And that's, I think, very important because even if we eat vitamins, that's where it goes back to synthetic. If you eat a synthetic ascorbic acid, your body is going to get depleted from something else because the body needs a little something else that that ascorbic acid doesn't have. And so it is better to eat this kind of stuff and just go to the farmer's market. You can't help yourself eating some good fruit. And so we do want to have rainbow colors that we eat. We do want to eat some of this, we want, that's from the farmer's market, I just got to say. That was from Safeway. Because the one from the farmer's market I already ate. Uh, I put it in a quiche. That was really good. And I think the last topic that I'll be bore you with tonight is the fiber topic. Fruits, vegetables, whole grain products have high fiber content. Fiber includes indigestible plant carbohydrates such as cellulose, which is cell wall. So we can't take it in, but the body can use it. So that's all the stuff that has some stuff in it. Look at these. Bran is often good. Whole wheat, that's the part of the whole wheat that's better than, or whole wheat's not that great either. But you know, better, you better go over here um, in terms of how much fiber you get. Because what happens is the fiber swells up with water and that stimulates intestinal activity and that shortens the time that goes through the stomach. So that gives us regular bowel movement. I don't know why I needed to write that. But that's also when you get people that say, I'll go once a week. I'm like, really? That's not okay. That's not okay. At least we gotta have fiber pills. Please? Oh. It's a drag. No, it's not. Your body, needs, your brain needs to be a little bit attending the can, the you know, the, the vehicle it gets to live in. That's very important, I think. Uh, but another thing that's interesting: it slows gastric emptying and therefore is more filling. So the more fiber we eat, the more filling we feel. It is easier to eat all those strawberries that were up here, you feel full, visualizing that, than visualizing eating those two Oreo cookies. You're not full after those, but you have more calories after those, right? And fiber, whatever has fiber in it, also diminishes blood sugar peaks, and that helps prevent diabetes. That's back to this sugar spike thing that was there before. And these are kind of cool. See, this is white bread, whatever. This is plasma glucose. This is over time, how it goes. Up, the brain so goes in, it goes down. So the yellow is what you don't want. You don't want to overshoot and undershoot. That's white bread. And then you get some high, this is the green one is high, this is all bread stuff. High fiber rye bread is the green stuff. So that's a big difference. Right there. I know it doesn't taste good. I get it. But it's still a big difference. I had to convince my dad when I was a teenager. He didn't have a habit at first. I know, I was a nut job back then doing this kind of stuff. Uh, when you read the label, again, you go to the fiber. You want to have a good amount of fiber. That's your happy place. 
don't know what it says there. You know, half is your half replacement. But you know, you have total carbs don't count. You go fiber. Total carbohydrates is the sugar too. That's the bad stuff, that's the good stuff. So you've got to be careful. And I like a good amount of protein. If I can have some good protein, we're happy. Her. Because that usually also balances all that stuff out. And so this is one where to finish up. I think, it, I hope it's visible the way I printed it, but I wanted to, because this is not just the bread, this is also pasta, rice, sugar stuff, and then we got fruits and grains, and so we can see the blue line. We don't have those lines on the autograph. It's the same graph, it just has more stuff on it. And it was too small to print on the other side, so I just made a whole page out of it. So with that, I'm gonna have a little bit of candy. You can have a little bit of candy. And any questions? No? Does all that make sense? Yes. I did such a good job? Yes. Oh, good. Maybe I should put some test codes in this one. Good. Well, basically, that's it. So now is candy time and selfie time, and then it's going home time. All right. Thank you.